So what's the difference between a solid silver flute and a silver plated flute, other than the price tag? In this video, I'll attempt to answer that question with just a little bit of science, as well as a side-by-side -side play test. So let's get to it. This video is sponsored by Flute World. With over 16,000 titles of sheet music, flute accessories, and new and used flutes from beginner to artist level, Flute World is your home for all things flute. Check out a Flute World showroom in person in Detroit, Charlotte, or in my backyard in San Francisco, or visit them online at fluteworld.com. Shipping is available throughout the US and internationally. Flutes can be made out of so many different types of metals and woods these days, and in fact, I found a page on the Flute World website that lists a whopping eight different kinds of just silver. I'll be sure to link to that page down in the description of this video. You might be wondering, do we really need eight different types of silver? Is it gonna make a difference at all, or is this just a marketing gimmick? Now, most pro players will tell you that, yes, the makers can do this or that to the head joint. They can change the thickness of the tubing. However, all things being equal, there is a perceptible difference between the different metals that they use to make flutes out of. Changing the metal alloy can change the way that the flute responds to your air, as well as the resulting sound, including things like projection and tonal possibilities. However, I'm not just going to tell you that, I'm going to try to explain to you why this happens. I won't go into all the possibilities, but I'm just going to focus on the difference between silver plated and solid silver flutes. If you're looking at intermediate or step up level flutes, the amount of solid silver versus silver plated is going to be an important part of your decision making process relating to sound as well as to the final price tag of your flute. If you have a beginner level flute such as this one, I would say there's about a 95% chance that the body of the flute is plated. And oftentimes these flutes are plated with either silver or with nickel. I'm pretty sure this one is plated with nickel. Underneath the plating is probably an alloy of nickel such as cupronickel or nickel silver. Cupronickel is an alloy of copper and nickel. Nickel silver, despite its name, does not actually include any silver whatsoever and is an alloy of nickel, copper, and zinc. It just looks a little bit silvery and hence the name. In some student flutes, the body of the flute will be plated while the head joint is silver. Now, oftentimes these head joints will be stamped as solid silver. However, there's also a quick test you can do to your head joint to see if it's made of nickel or silver. All you have to do is lightly tap your fingernail against the base of the head joint and listen to what it sounds like. Here's the nickel head joint. And here's the silver head joint. Once again, nickel. And silver. So why does this happen? It all comes down to science and specifically the densities of nickel and silver. Nickel silver, which remember has zero silver in it, just nickel, copper, and zinc, has an approximate density of 8.57 grams per cubic centimeter. For sterling silver, that density is 10.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Let's do some math. 10.3 divided by 8.57 means approximately 20% more density in sterling silver versus nickel silver. Going back to the head joint ding test, the lower density of nickel explains why the nickel based head joint is lighter and it dings at a higher pitch for a longer time, as opposed to the heavier, denser solid silver head joint that thuds at a lower pitch. So how does this play out over a whole flute with silver plated versus solid silver? A silver plated flute is lighter and less dense than a solid silver flute. The plated flute will play with less resistance and take less air and energy to get it going. However, sometimes a little bit of resistance can be a good thing. The greater resistance and density of the solid silver flute can potentially give it more power to project, as well as flexibility of dynamics and tone colors. Let's look at a real life example. Here I have two Powell Sonari flutes sent to me by Flute World. Thanks to Flute World, and please check out my demo videos for each of these flutes, which I'll link down in the description. Both flutes have solid sterling silver head joints and silver plated mechanism. However, the Sonari 505 has silver plated body tubing, while the Sonari 601 has solid silver tubing throughout. The Sonari 601 definitely feels a little bit heavier than the 505. However, I was curious about how much heavier it actually was, so I broke out my trusty scale. 
I started by weighing the Sonari 505, which has a solid silver head joint with a silver plated body and silver plated mechanism, and this weighed in at 460 grams. Next, I weighed the Sonari 601, which has a solid silver head joint with solid silver body tubing and silver plated mechanism, and this weighed in at 474 grams. Doing the math, that's a difference of about 14 grams. And for reference, 14 grams is the weight of approximately 9 blueberries, 3.5 teaspoons of sugar, or 2 ultra-fine tip permanent markers, minus their caps. At the current going rates, this 14 gram difference makes about a thousand dollars difference in the price of the flute. However, does it also make a difference in the sound? I'll now play for you a quick side-by-side -side demonstration of these two flutes. And keep in mind that they both come from the same maker. They're both the same tubing thickness, have the same style of head joint cut, they're both solid silver head joints with plated mechanism. So really the main difference is going to be between that silver plated body tubing and the solid silver tubing. The music will be the traditional Irish tune Danny Boy from my Easy Flute Trial Music. After that demo, here are a few of my thoughts about silver plated versus solid silver flute bodies. With the silver plated flute, the response was quick and it didn't take a lot of air to get it going. However, I also felt that I wasn't able to put as much air into the silver plated flute as I could with the solid silver flute. The solid silver flute gave a little bit more resistance pushing back against my air. However, this also means that I was able to put more air into the flute when I wanted to. Overall, I think this led to a slightly darker and more substantial sound from the solid silver flute versus the silver plated one. However, what did you think? Did you hear a difference? Please let me know down in the comments. I think it's clear from the science, as well as from my playing experience, that the metal composition of your flute can have a great impact on how the flute responds to your ear, as well as how it sounds to the listener. Which is best, however, is a very subjective question and depends a lot on the individual player. So I hope you'll have the opportunity to try a lot of different metal and wooden compositions of flutes and form your own opinions. And please let me know what you find down in the comments. That's it for today's video and I hope you've gotten some value and enjoyment out of it and if so, please let me know by giving it a like. Please check out my apparel and sheet music at lansuzuki.com store. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for watching.